Costa Rica is as wild as it is beautiful. With adventure around every corner, I'm off to take a closer look. But not too close. Yeah, I'm outside at striking range, right? On a finger of land that separates two continents and two oceans lies Costa Rica, a tropical paradise brimming with lush rainforest, magnificent waterfalls, and an incredible variety of wildlife. The extraordinary biodiversity of Costa Rica, the wild rivers and whitewater canyons, spectacular rainforests and untouched jungles, and especially the volcanoes, all make it an exciting destination for adventure seekers like me. Costa Rica is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, a 40,000 kilometer band of seismic activity that has created hundreds of volcanoes, many of them clustered in this small country. In the last century, Many spectacular eruptions have made Costa Rica a hotbed of volcanic activity. And being in this ring of fire also makes this country prone to earthquakes. This 2009 quake was dramatically captured during local news coverage. But just seeing these volcanoes is sometimes a major challenge here. This trip is a bit of a gamble for me because I've come in a transition period between the rainy and dry seasons. I want to see the rain of the famous rainforest here, but I need clear conditions to go and see the volcanoes or else they're obscured by clouds. So it's going to be a bit interesting to see what Mother Nature hands to me this trip. My guide for this adventure, Eduardo Caravaca, has witnessed a definite change in his country's climate. This time of year, early December, it should be drier than it is now. Have you noticed a lot of changes in the weather patterns lately? Or what are yes, in fact, I remember that a long time ago, we used to have a very well-marked dry season and also same with the, with the rainy one. But lately, uh, this, this transition in between one and the other has been changing a lot. You know, like the, the, what we used to call the summer, which is our dry season, is coming a little bit later than it, is, it used to be long ago. We are suffering all the effects of the global warming. Hopefully, we can find some better weather in the low-lying areas. Well, the weather is fine here in the valleys, but up high by the volcanoes, it's crap. It's totally raining, fog, not good for climbing. So I'm gonna take advantage of this situation and go rappelling down some waterfalls. The thundering water brought on by the heavy rains this time of year creates perfect conditions for my next challenge. Canyoning or canyoneering is basically the opposite of mountain climbing. Instead of climbing up the mountain, you descend down into the canyons, sometimes rappelling down waterfalls, going through pools. Should be interesting and pretty extreme. But for me, the bigger the challenge, the more I'm gaining. Once the riggers get me set, I inch out onto the slippery ledge. Now, all it takes is a leap of faith. At the bottom of the falls, the force of the water is tremendous. And the longer I stay in the torrent, the more exhausted I become. I 
continue my journey through the jungle on the aptly named zip lines. On this part of the adventure, you literally fly over the canopy with nothing but a leather glove and a strong hand for brakes. <laughs> now that's a ride. The next phase of my Costa Rican adventure, to see what lies beneath. I never realized that Costa Rica had such a fascinating network of caves, so it was a pleasant surprise when Eduardo took me to the Cavernas Vernado. You know, the one thing that is kind of strange is that this country is very prone to earthquakes. Yeah. That's the only thing that freaks me out about being down in here. These caves are literally carved by rushing water mixed with carbonic acid. The process takes millions of years. The underground system here at Vernado is large and complex, full of winding and sometimes unnervingly small passages. But I was able to get deep into them. Into some incredible chambers. This is no place for claustrophobics. Down here, it's cold, wet, filled with sharp rocks, bats and spiders, and pitch black. It's my definition of heaven. I can handle the caves of Costa Rica, but what about its deadly vipers? I'm in Costa Rica, exploring its incredible variety of natural wonders. Here in Costa Rica, obviously, huge biodiversity here. It's what Costa Rica is famous for, and a big part of that is the snake population. So I'm here at the Serpentarium in Monteverde to see exactly what kind of snakes they have here. This country is crawling with snakes, from harmless vine snakes all the way up to this guy. You know, the Bushmaster yes. is uh, maybe the, the most dangerous snakes because of the amount of poison they right. could inject. This snake is so powerful, it takes two strong handlers to keep him under control. Well, this is the Bushmaster, which is sometimes known as the ox killer, because there's so much venom in this snake, it can easily take down an ox. Obviously, <laughs> humans are killed by these guys. How many people are killed by these every year? In Costa Rica, mm -hmm. uh, we have around six to seven hundred accidents or snake bites, bites a year. Every year yeah, yeah, every year. But less than one percent of people who get bitten by snakes die. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because in Costa Rica we make the we have uh, anti venoms for all vipers. Yes. So this snake isn't even full size. It's only about half as big as it could possibly be. Yes. Yes. Uh, they can get uh, three point sixty meters long. Anti venom or not. You don't want this thing biting you. These vipers, they have retractable fangs. I'm sorry. And when they go to strike, they open their mouth wide and the fangs extend outwards. The sound of this neck snake is unmistakable. <laughs> when you hear this sound, huh? you know okay. what is nearby. The one good thing about a rattlesnake is that they let you know when they're pissed off. Right. <laughs> That's the only good thing about a rattlesnake. Now, is it possible for me to hold on to the head as well? Is that, is that, or is that not allowed? <laughs> we, we can try, yeah. We can try it? We can try. We can try. Yeah. yeah, and if okay. it fails, <laughs> maybe if someone can hold the tail for me. Okay, okay, okay. Tenga la cola usted. Okay, now, press. Okay, wait, wait. It's head. Oh, oh, oh it's, it's, banana. Banana. Wow. it's spitting venom. Whoa. Wow. Okay. Okay. 
it's not the best idea Put I've ever had. This, hey, this uh, finger like this, it. yeah, and the two fingers on the neck. Strong. Okay. okay, very strong. And press strong and on, on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yes, this is a live rattlesnake. It turns out they don't have anti-venom for this uh, snake here, and the closest hospital is about two hours away. So if I make a mistake... Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Just help you. Hold on. Okay. okay, I'm going to put him down because <laughs> he's starting to get... He's getting upset. Okay. Okay, okay. here we go. Oh, hello. Oh, oh, Woo! <laughs> ready to strike. The rattlesnake may be the most well-known member of the viper class of snakes, but this guy is the deadliest. Viper is a classification of snake. Of all the snake species in Central America, the fertilance is by far the most feared. It's fast, it's aggressive, and its venom is extremely toxic. You could lick this, that's no problem. You can get this on your fingers. I now have Fertilance venom all over my fingers. I could lick this and it wouldn't do me any harm. Unless I had a small cut in my mouth or anything like that, but I'm not gonna take the chance. It's only dangerous when it goes directly into your bloodstream. Yeah, I got it, good, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. I got yeah. it. <laughs> it's actually scary holding this thing because <laughs> there's the, they're like hypodermic needles on the end of these fangs and they are so sharp. And these snakes are particularly fast. So you'll be walking along a trail, maybe at night, and you'll feel something hit your leg, and it'll start to burn, and you'll never see the snake that hits you because it'll tag you and then take off into the night. The only thing scarier than holding on to a deadly viper is letting it go. Okay, one, two, three. The weather is clear, and now it's time to get close up to some of the incredible volcanoes Costa Rica. Right now we're winding our way up the mountain road up to 3,432 meters and the top of Irazu Volcano, which is one of the most beautiful volcanoes in all of Costa Rica. It's a very popular tourist attraction and erupted historically. As a matter of fact, in 1963, it erupted the day that JFK arrived in Costa Rica. Although Irazu has erupted 23 times in modern history, the show that it gave to the US president is considered the most infamous. Lasting over two years, the eruption dumped huge amounts of ash over a wide area of central Costa Rica, wreaking havoc on the region. Built up ash and heavy rains combined to create huge flash floods that caused tremendous damage. Now a national park, thousands visit each year to view the magnificent crater and emerald lake that's formed here. This ruin is all the remains of what once was an observation platform. It was completely destroyed during the 1963 eruption. Although today, Irazu lies quiet, large fissures have developed in the side of the crater. There is some concern here that at some time in the future, we don't know exactly when, the entire northern face could slump away, causing a massive explosion of the volcano. And if you look closely, you can actually see cracks along the ridge where the rock is actually weakening. Irazu is not currently erupting. But not all of Costa Rica's volcanoes are sleeping. Rising 1,600 meters, Mount Arenal is the most active volcano in the country. Today, I'm joining an international team of scientists who are studying the subterranean magma flow of Arenal. This research may help predict eruptions that could threaten the surrounding area, including this nearby wind farm. Well, at the moment, we're just gathering together all the equipment for the field, so we have to gather all the seismometers, the, the solar panels, all that type of thing. 
and just organize the teams and get everybody ready to go up. We drive about halfway up the mountain by truck on the ash-covered road. From here we walk. The scientific team is transporting and installing seismic imaging equipment that will help the scientists better understand the underground magma movement on the volcano. Uh, we're just uh, taking up the cables for connecting the instrument. The seismometer needs to be connected to a computer and to a global positioning system for the time signal. So we're just gathering together all those cables so we can bring them up into the field with the seismometers and connect everything up. One, two. Climbing volcanoes is never easy. And this one is no exception. I wouldn't really call this so much a trail as a, uh, it's not really a trail. <laughs> just follow the loose rocks up to the exploding mountain, that's all. I already hear rocks coming down the side of the mountain. Several times a day, Arenel spits out huge red hot lava blocks just to remind us that we're climbing an active volcano. This uh, rock that I'm walking on is leftover pyroclastic flow deposits from an eruption in 2000. Now, unfortunately, that eruption killed two people a woman and her guide. We're going to be going well above this flow up into the extreme danger zone. I'm with a scientific expedition in Costa Rica preparing to ascend Mount Arenal. They've come here armed with complex and delicate equipment to study the subterranean structure of this active volcano. But the area we're exploring today is well within the striking distance of Arenal's molten hot lava blocks and pyroclastic flow. Like this one that killed two visitors here in 2000. Traveling under this part of the volcano is strictly prohibited, and typically I wouldn't even be allowed up here. The only reason I am is because I'm with the scientists. Otherwise, this is considered an absolute no-no danger zone. All right, we've arrived at the site. Now begins the painstaking task of organizing the piles of wire, precisely laying out the field and installing and calibrating the instruments. But what is the purpose of this expedition? What we're doing is we are trying to understand the nature of the seismic sources on the volcano. All volcanoes make, make noise and uh, as seismologists, we put out instruments on the surface of the volcano to record those sounds that the volcano makes, much like a medical cardiograph, except we're looking at acoustic signals rather than electrical signals. And so what we're doing is putting out these instruments to try to understand what those signals are telling us about how fluids are moving in the subsurface in a volcano. Beneath every volcano, there's a labyrinth of underground chambers where 1,200 degree magma flows. First we checked how level it is. Yes. These tests help the scientists better understand how the magma is moving and where it might surface. We're putting out 10 instruments in what's called an array, so they're just out in a, in a semicircle and we are installing those individual seismometers and each seismometer records ground vibration so they're continuous even though we can't feel it here because we we're not so sensitive to ground vi vibration they're continuous vibrations as we stand here these instruments are sensitive enough to detect those and we can use some techniques to turn that information into a knowledge of what the near surface uh, variability or structure of the volcano is so that's today's job you know, 
Dr. Bean, along with Costa Rican volcanologist Carlos Ramirez, supervised the project. Oh, it's nice and deep. Each sensor must be painstakingly positioned to get precise readings. Oh, yeah, that's really... My big boots come in handy for calibration. The data collected here may someday help volcanologists predict eruptions and ultimately save lives. Good, yeah. So it's working on all three components, yeah. One thing that Arnold was really known for is these large, hot blocks of lava that come tumbling down the side of the mountain. And even today here, every now and then, I can hear this avalanche of rocks coming down the side. I keep glancing over my shoulder to make sure they're not headed my way. Even the seasoned scientists get nervous working on this mountain. Well, I'll tell you, we're only going to stay here for as short a time as possible. I'll put it that way. <laughs> you don't like to linger here? I wouldn't. I wouldn't linger. I'd say I wouldn't camp overnight uh, at this particular location. I wouldn't linger. Um, I mean, it's nice to be here. It puts an edge on, on it, but uh, you know, it, it can be dangerous as well. So we'll get in and out as quickly as we can. Scientists continue to monitor the volcanoes of Costa Rica while the adventurous enjoy the wild side of this diverse country. Costa Rica is just amazing. There's just so much to see here. Of course, for a person like me, it's got everything. Incredible rains, lots of volcanoes, jungle, wildlife, you name it. I think I might have to retire here. Well, someday, perhaps. Meanwhile, there's a lot more world left out there for me to explore.